In this lesson, we're going to be looking at intervals. So intervals refers to the space between the notes on the piano, and they are so important for us to learn because they help us to sight read better, they help us to train our ears better, and they're going to help you when it comes to composing music because you'll have an understanding of how different intervals create different feelings or sounds. So let's take a look at some of the basic intervals to start. If we play C and then D, we call that an interval of a second. C to E is a third, C to F is a fourth, C to G is a fifth, C to A is a sixth, C to B is a seventh, and then we land back to C on the top, giving us an octave or an eighth. So let's take a look at how these appear on the staff. So what I want you to do is see them on the staff as well as hear them. So think about how each of these intervals makes you feel or what it maybe makes you think of so that you can start to connect feelings to the way these sound. So C to D is a second. And we can play it separately, it sounds like this. C to E is a th third. fourth a fifth a sixth a seventh and then an octave So those are the basic, more simple intervals. From there, we can get a little bit more complicated by looking at some of the black keys or the half steps. Let's take a look. C to D is the interval of a second. If we flatten the top note down a half step, we get what's called a minor second. That sounds very unpleasant. <laughs> if we take a third, flatten the top note, we have what's called a minor third. So there you have a more moody, sadder sound. Now fourth is kind of special. We are not gonna flatten the top note of this fourth, which is also known as a perfect fourth, but you can raise the top note to create what's called an augmented fourth. When we use the word augmented, we mean to raise something by a half step. We can play a fifth, which is also known as a perfect fifth. If you raise the top note of that perfect fifth, once again, it's called augmented. It sounds a little bit intense. You can also lower the top note of that perfect fifth and create what's called a diminished fifth. Interesting how it's also kind of, if you play an augmented fourth and a diminished fifth are the same thing. So it gets a little bit complicated in here, but stick with me, we're gonna keep going. If you have a sixth then you lower the top note, you get what's called a minor sixth. Again, same as the augmented fifth. So. It can get a little tricky and confusing, but these are really great things to know. So we've got a sixth or a minor sixth. We've got a seventh or a minor seventh. And then we land back on our octave. So those are the more complicated piano intervals. But this would give you a basic understanding of what the intervals are, what they're called, and how they sound. So I suggest that you play these intervals starting on a variety of keys, noticing the distance of you know, half steps, what creates the interval of a third. So we've got you know, one, two full steps. A minor third is one, two, three half steps. You, know, you can look at a fifth the same way. A fifth is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half steps. A seventh is made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 half steps. Play these often, play them in many different keys. Think about how they make you feel, think about how they look, think about how they feel under the hand. The more you play the intervals and really make it an intentional practice, the more it'll integrate and become part of your toolkit as a piano player. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you next time.